the Indian Navy holds a sizable edge in naval capability over most navies in its primary area of operations. This video of dual carrier operations received nothing short of a chef's kiss by defense enthusiasts in the region. The history of Indian Navy's carrier aviation though, while rich, is full of switches between different concepts at regular intervals. In this video, we will explore the past, the present and the future of Indian Naval Carrier Aviation and try to highlight what needs to be done. Indian Navy's carrier history started with the original INS Vikrant, which was a Caddo bar carrier. India chose British Hawker Seahawk for fleet air defense and strike, and the French Alize for anti-submarine warfare. Alizés were selected over the British Ferry Gannet to provide anti-submarine warfare capabilities. Seahawks were dated for their time with the Indian Navy, thanks to guns and unguided rockets only armament. The jet saw combat with the Indian Navy over current-day Bangladesh, as part of Indian Navy's right hook against Pakistan during the 1971 Indo-Pak conflict. The Vikranth still provided unmatched capability in the region and was a cornerstone in setting up Indian Navy's supremacy in the IOR which still exists today. There was a period of combined ops with Sea Harriers before INS Vikranth was refitted for pure short vertical takeoff and landing ops. INS Virat was bought as a Sto VL carrier from the get-go, and continued service well into the 2010s. She gave way to INS Vikramadathya and INS Vikramth version 2 which were procured as Sto bar carriers. They brought MiG-29Ks into service with them which have had a problematic service life with the Indian Navy. These jets have suffered from poor reliability, poor maintenance due to design and manufacturing defects, and the Indian Navy wants to dump them. Now, Rafal M's have been cleared for procurement after competitive trials with FA-18 Super Hornet. The Rafal Marine variant was designed for Katobar operations from French carriers, and here it will be used for Stobar with performance penalties. This is supposed to be a short-term plan as local designs are supposed to take over combat ops in the near future. The tale of domestic naval aviation started after NP-2 landed on INS Vikramadathya as part of its maiden carrier trials. By this point, the Indian Navy had long ditched the naval LCA as it was just not capable enough to be the primary naval fighter. The plan is to develop a twin-engine naval fighter called TEDBF, but again, this all feels interim. Will there be a future naval AMCA? We don't know at this point but it is a possibility given the Chinese might soon have J-35 naval stealth fighters in service. India might have to play catch up again if a naval AMCA is not in the pipeline. The future of Indian aircraft carrier program is also still up in the air. There is one camp that wants to build one more INS Vikranth class carrier, a 45,000-ton stow bar design. Another camp says, take your time and invest in a 65,000-ton or larger carrier. The Chinese have moved on to 75,000 to 80,000-ton carrier designs with the Fujian. They already held an edge with Liaoning and Shandong which are far larger than Indian carriers. We also don't know whether the new Indian carrier will be Kato Bar or Stobar. For comparison, most other carrier operating navies have stuck to either one concept or switched from one to another. If the future is Kato Bar, TEDBF and Naval AMCA must be designed to be Kato Bar capable, Rafal already is. If the plan is not set in stone today, there will be another transition to whatever is decided then. The Indian Navy has suffered from indecision and frequent changes for a single or two carrier fleet where the concurrent fighter fleet hasn't crossed 100. From the looks of it, they are heading for another change. If India does go for Katobar, then it will be a fourth concept change, and a circle back to the origins. It is costly to change ops concepts and buy a new jet fighter every time you do so. Hence, it is in Indian Navy's interest to make sure all its programs and goals are aligned when it comes to aircraft carriers and carrier aviation for the next 20 years. Until next time, this was Epsilon.